This is more of a motivation talk, more inspiring, which are my flaps. Um, the name of my talk is a group that I've written, Don't Give Up On Your Dreams, or Your Dreams Don't Give Up On You. And unfortunately, it's very few people that I suppose in life achieve your dreams, because most people, uh, when they go and get tough, they become demotivated. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do this talk, but let's enter it pretty fast. I'm going to look at, I suppose, this group here that Esther has originally was written in 2012, and I was asked during the writer's strike for somebody to make a screen of this, which I have not done. Bird knows as yet, I don't know, but the writing, the, the, the screen writers group, I think, is good. And um, the one that you see there is the more up to new version. When I thank you in there, your session the first one, and during, I suppose, um, COVID, I go to the second one. So I had always, I suppose, um, a thing about how challenge heroes, resist the temptation to skate yarn, turn obstacles into opportunity, that's important, balance risk with guest opportunity, and there are no shortcuts in life and don't give up. So one of my first heroes, I suppose, was here as Ernest Hemingway. And I think that writers have a unique ability to transport at least me and other people to distant places that are captivating. I always was a traveler, even at a young age, I'd listen to shortwave radio from the Russian and this and like that. And then um, this sort of part of my imagination. And I followed a lot of these writers around the world. Ernest Hemingway, um, I followed him to, I suppose, Africa. Recently, I'm back from Michigan Falls in Uganda, where he crashed his plane, if you remember. And um, they thought he was dead, and I stayed in the same hotel as he did. Really, not to follow in their path, but I happened to be in the same areas <laughs> as they were trying to advantage. And this is me, I suppose, in Cuba, where, of course, he <coughs> lived after he was dead Broadway. And he was good friends with Fidel Castro, and he had uh, that wonderful farm that he has there, the look at Juan's picture of Asia. And uh, he had his ship there, and he spent a lot of his life there. And a lot of film stars came down to visit him. Now, also, he wrote this Snows of King and Charge, and Lord. I, I myself was an artist from very young age, was about 14, and I wrote similar articles. And his then, writing from Killing and Charge was also, I suppose, about regret, persons, relationships, as mine was. And I also had. Um, a fondness for Wilfred Tyson In fact, I wrote one of these obituaries for him when he died. And um, he spent a lot of his life. And he was a British explorer who often had his abbot back, uh, our historic, aristocratic background to an extent. But he traveled to Africa uh, into um, Iraq, where he wrote the Marsh Harps. And I read Marsh Harps when I was 12. Now, Whitford also was the game warrior <coughs> and the Boer War creator. Have you ever been in there, Robert? You never have been out of there. Now. So, now, Boer War creator is wonderful in itself, including Carl from Paul Kino, 22 miles across, that uh, the active system hasn't changed in many years. And I suppose um, that was one of the things I wrote for Twitter back then. And um, he wrote that book, The Marsh Arabs, on um, those primitive people who lived in the suffered in Iraq, and I uh, suppose the hopping fish with five Tom Spears. And I was lucky enough to be able to live with these people before, sit down, dreams, the, the, uh, um, the marshes, which he did because during the Iraq War, a lot of the Shia prisoners would, the, or, or defectors from the army, would um, go and live there. I live in Berlin with similar people who wanted to be in Bundesberg. I suppose that's the sort of life that um, I was attracted to, to an extent. So um, that was me at a young age, I suppose, um, with the Marsh Arabs. And the other thing that I wanted to do, as well as make me skin in southern Iraq, was to become a doctor. 
and I see the most into the fine doctors, but see these television where um, in a school from Robin Hill and that's very much toward in the Syria. Now at a very early age I started to win towards. This is um, what I did in frequency motivation and I was only 13. I didn't even know what I was doing. I set up this I suppose system where you can laser about some gets a county mirror and when you got the laser light quite a distance away, almost I suppose a couple of hundred yards, when you put it back to a photo of KXL, they carried it to wave and that so I didn't even know what it was. And at the time I entered for the Resumption and Scientist, which had won many years ago and got a notation from Harold Woodson at the time. I skipped to the Marcus Pike had said at the time this research is ahead of its time and I'm sure we'll find use for it someday. Believe it or not, the first CD was based on that principle and fucking laser working through really um, off all switches, exactly the same thing, frequency modulating. And then I went to college in St. Michael's. I went there very late bit show to this conversation with the roast of chance. I could get the drone four times. There's the normal guy studies and audio frequency oscillators. And there's around that time there also was papers up on that was in the bridge papers and I had a child's truck with a plant sitting all that. I didn't vote for the two of them that came out so we did the work. Then I went to the University of Belfast. And I was here in Australia when things really kicked off bad. And so then we were in a situation where students were being kidnapped by foreign militaries, some of them were killed, and um, I thought it was safer for my own life and probably the others that sort of had to make sure to do medicine in the South of Ireland. So at that stage, there are no shortcuts in life when you've got as it was after the you had to face them. So I went to the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin, and the Royal College of Surgeons was a wonderful institution. That's where Graves went to college sit around there, and also Dennis Burke, and you found there, from Burke to Ebola in Uganda. I lived in Uganda, it is the same place in the Kiri University that they had used, and that's where you were Dennis's daughter recently in Enniskillen, where they made a plaque trip. So when I was in college, I won. Every other go with wards at the time. It was us when you walk through there and see your navel everywhere. And that's the an anatomy back then. So 1979, Saddam drained the marshes, so that was going to be out of my sort of remit. But then I suppose other things are happening as well. In that sort of period, uh, Margaret Thatcher took over Parliament in Britain. And she invoked, I suppose, the um, economics of Milton Friedman, as she know, and that destroyed a lot of, uh, I suppose, education in Britain. She also, I suppose, destroyed a lot of worse because talents and all the same that never even really recovered. But from my point of view, she just my go to it. Uh, because something in that past TV and birds. So, so many years, so not going to continue in Delta. And the college I was at was at that stage, something like 25,000 a year. So it was either you talk, give in, I took it as an obstacle, how do you deal with it? So um, at the time we went to Germany originally. So I worked in Germany as a painter, but I knew I'd never get that sort of money together. And one night when I was in Munich, um, a student told me that there was a scam that German students would give where you could bring a car to Istanbul and like get four times its value. So this was quite a complicated scam. It involved to do it on a large scale, which we I did, I suppose. <laughs> um, you could get a custom stop from Syria, and when you went into Turkey, I was stamped the thing to get the left and to back out. But believe it or not, the stamp which you were used, the guy died. And so when people attempted that, of course, they knew that it was a bit of a scam. But from time, I decided to scale this up. So we brought eight Mercedes uh, down to Turkey. 
Uh, at the time, unfortunately also, this was really dangerous for Westerners in Istanbul because Midnight Express had just been put out and it was true. That's the way the trophy was. I was in one shop where Willie Hayes had been arrested. I got letters from his girlfriend at the time. They were still hanging on the wall. And uh, we had to balance, I suppose, that type of risk and best opportunity. So we had to, I suppose, in life, um, carefully weigh potential dangers where decisions have been made against conditions of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you balance, I suppose, risk against demand, uh, potential outcome, your goal you have to keep focused on. So um, as a writer, I mean, I worked about Istanbul at the time, uh, that's me in Punjab, back in those early jails. And uh, Punjab was wonderful because it really was where a lot of travelers hung out in the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, now I was in a period, obviously, long after that, but it was that, I suppose, across the west and east, Iran kicked off, nobody could travel down to Australia that way anymore. And then, um, what decides to put up here is ambition has to be your driving force, and it compels individual stories of desire, goals, and aspirations. And um, there was a statement that sort of said that uh, ambition is an ad that is an ad of success, that persistence is the big and traveling, and our case, that was commercially spoiled cars. So, then I came back to college, I got my medical degree, and I was only out um, six months when this um, young uh, Harold adult in Dona, um, and then, and he was probably what to die by that inspiration. He um, was quite some money. I put his gloves, I was up to do a radio stab, he thought I was a member of Wayne, but he was using from the online. He knocked back to the over. He said, I'm positive. And this is difficult. Um, I went. Sorry. I'm going to the theater. I'm a god. My friend took us a big long archive week. And look, this is what was we were facing at the time. Everybody knew that if you go to HIV, you doubt the first. Is the shot at that? It was an IV drug users who had been killed by AIDS. But now we know every one of us will be devastated by it. It can be stopped, and you can help stop it. If you have sex, have just one second for all of us. Those interiors, high sensories. So I went there constantly and um, it got worse. When I was there, I was asked to leave the hospital. I was named for going to theater. They closed down the theater and I was told that I was going to be down. My professor in virology, it's in the to um, said, listen, I didn't know where I went to IEM. Everybody who passed and was four of the birds of doubt, a nurse in London recently. So I'd said the best thing to do was go deeper with me, they have it. So I was credited to this work. <laughs> and So I went to New Zealand and I knew that it has been three years tested three times a year. I probably would be stuck. So I went to New Zealand and I thought, thanks. I did a good time in New Zealand and I just, the polls were just in the charts. Shen, they'll do that before he died. And uh, so um, I'm starting a new life there. And um, 
then um, I was in Rotate the Public and me, um, so I got up on my neck once and I decided to continue my journey to uh, Iraq. So in uh, 1990, possibly the job came up and when I was there, I um, visited, I suppose, Nineveh, Babylon, and I went to the classics, so it was a wonderful experience for me to be living in that first world. But obviously, Sudan also uh, was <coughs> using vicious tactics to, to suppress its people. And when I was there, one of my jobs was covering ICU. And at that stage, I was also came down from Britain. And um, he was caught as a journalist, he was beheaded. I was at the British Council when they threw his body back. The nurse that I was supposed to be working with death in Paris was given a life sentence, and that's the car that was mine. But Pastor Basra had used that to get you baby with death in Paris when he was caught. <laughs> At that stage also, the gas in the first happened, and uh, the ram was there for it. But I was in ICU, and I started noticing all the patients coming in from Suleimani, and the Erbil, Mozilla, and uh, I went back home in the year 1990, and some of the times it broke for that it was Iraq, it was kind of up. So I decided, for right or wrong, for right as it happened to go up into the area and uh, we weren't really allowed into Kurdistan. That's me in our data on the way up and uh, many people <coughs> addressed as a curry actually met the Pesh uh, went into the area and um, got caught and uh, they were not got arrested and given a year's jail sentence. But then um, believe it or not when I was in jail, he was planning to invade Kuwait. And this was the end of June 1990, and I was like that. Then one morning, a parent of Kandan, mostly of the books, nothing too heavy, said, do you think all the variants? I said, no. He says, I know James Joyce, I know Trinity College, and my cousins are in Dublin. And he threw me out. And you I stood there to get my viewers. I couldn't believe this. But believe it or not, all the 450 doctors and nurses in the hospital that was working at the Baghdad were all arrested and kept as hostages. Did you remember? Because he made the Kuwait two or three days later. He demanded Kuwait on the 1st of August 1990. I would argue July the 28th. So, when I got out, I suppose, and um, that's, I suppose, in terms of the first year, it's just a statement of Buddha, and it says in the confrontation between the stream and the rock, the stream will always win, not to stand, but through persistence. So I went to Australia, and I uh, became a fine doctor, which was part of my time. And then I came back to Delta, set up the Elizabeth Clinic, and then, um, I was starting to, I suppose, a lot of different neighbors. We're definitely focusing on HIV. And we did the first, I suppose, um, the static results for HIV and atrophy. Myself, Robert Gallagher in California, <coughs> Peter Bellhouse in Holland did the um, switch a little because we were using skull cap, which could cause, obviously, an um, insect injury. So we switched over to bioarchimate that we had to get off in the end because it causes dome problems. But to skip to it, I'm probably running out of time on that. And um, one of the things to do, I suppose, is give back. On, I stand quite a lot of time in Africa. Um, in HIV orphanages, that's in Yalani, that's in Yalani, that's in the South Arcaminus. So it's going to be done in the Yalani Conference of 2001, you remember. Um, when the lesson and the other part of the thing, I stood against Pablo Rodriguez's sort of um, attitude. We were in the Western Cape then, and Chapel Rock, because he said that I lived there a bit. And um, 
The same way as we have COVID deniers, we have HIV deniers, and uh, as Cactuin, the lesser kid, HIV drugs were used, but the inability of the AIC to treat their own populace or the responsible deaths in 12 million people. I have a ban with South Africa for writing about that at the time. So then um, I fit in between, I suppose, working in Arctic and still good, and uh, started winning different awards. It's kind of a sheet. That's the end, I think.